talking about why wear it? If we have faith in the Most High, the reason why we wear it is because our faith is taught by the traditions of man. And it's not, we don't have fear of the Most High according to what he says in his word. It's not about what I think. It's not about what I say. It's about what this word says. It's not about what your pastor think or your friends think or what they say. It's about what the word says. Okay. Give me the book of Matthew chapter six and at verse, start at verse, uh, da -da -da -da. Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, and we do so in his name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai King, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is Brother Uriel Ben Judah. Dawi Ben Judah. And we're going to come at you. We're going to use, we could use for a topic today. I want to use the topic of why worry if you have faith. And we have a lot of our brothers and sisters out here, they worried about circumstances, they worried about things, they even worried about camp doctrines and stuff like that. And we have to understand that that's not of the most high to be worrying about circumstances that we have no control over. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into these scriptures and we're going to see what the most high requires of us as far as worrying about certain cir circumstances that we have no control over. So we want to start with the book of Hosea chapter 4 and at verse 6. This is the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou knowledge shall be not priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So the most high, the reason why we go through circumstances, the reason why we wear is because we reject knowledge. We reject this truth according to the scriptures. And it's time, it's high time that we come up out of that uh, um, that sleep. And high time that we come to the scriptures and acknowledge so we can have the power to overcome any um, obstacles uh, that, may be, that may come into our place. Also, too, we know it's a saying that a lot of people use when they're going through something or when things is coming in their past. Even you hear this a lot in the Christian church where they say that it's just the Lord taking me through a test. But we know that the Most High, according to the scriptures, does not do that. So we're going to get that in the book of James. We're going to go to the book of James, chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 13. Bring it out. Okay. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So the Most High said, don't, when you tempt it, don't say that you're tempted of God. God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man so the most high is not cannot be tempted with evil and he says that he's not tempting no man with evil but we gotta go we gotta see what's going on when temptation and problems come up in our lives but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust of his what his own lust he said you're tempted when you're drawn away with your own lust the wicked one, the kid, the people of this world, the uh, the wicked people of this world can only tempt you what's in you to do. So if there's certain things, certain circumstances that's going on in our lives, we need to check our spirit because there's something that we're doing that is not of the most high or something that's still in us that we we felt as though that we've been delivered from that's still stuck stagnant in, in our um in our lives. And entice. So you're tempted from your own lust and you're enticed. Say for instance, if I, if I don't smoke crack, somebody cannot tempt me with crack. The reason why crack kids are tempted with crack because it's still in them to do. In other words, we have to repent. We have to turn away from our evil and wicked ways and come back to the most high. Good. Mm -hmm. Then 
Then when lust has conceived and bringeth forth for sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So when the lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Because what's in me to do, it bringeth forth me to do something that's outside of the will of the Most High. And once I do that, that's where sin comes in. And sin, the wages of sin is death. Okay? Do not err, my beloved brethren. So he said, don't let the err, beloved brethren. So now we know. We come to the realization. We come to the, to the, um, to the, the, the understanding that the Most High does not tempt us. So we can no longer use the concept of, oh, it's just the Most High putting me through a test. We can't use that no more. It's our own wicked devices, our own wicked thoughts that's causing us to go away from the Most High. Okay? So from there, go to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, and I want verse... Slaki, Psalms chapter 55. The book of Psalms chapter 55 and at verse 22. When you got it, bring it out. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 55 and 22. Bring it out. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. So we are not supposed to be sitting here, balled up in the house in fetal position, worried about circumstances that we have no control over. We're supposed to cast our burdens onto the Most High. Okay, good. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteousness to be, to be moved. So the scripture said, cast thy burdens upon the Most High, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. The reason why we're suffering, the reason why we're in this state of depression is because we think that we have what is called faith, but we are far from it. Variation and being worried about a topic that you have no control over is of the devil. It is not of the Most High, and the Most High is not tempting us with variation. Okay? So from there, I want to go to the book of Psalms. Stay in the book of Psalms. Go to first, um, chapter 37. Babu 37, and I want to um, start at verse, start at verse 5. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 37, and verse 5. Bring it out. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. In order for the Most High to move, the only order for your circumstances to change, the first thing that we have to do is commit ourselves to the Most High. And by committing ourselves to the Most High, that means submit yourself to the laws, statutes, and commandments which he gave our forefathers from the beginning. Okay? So he said, commit thyself to the, to the Most High and trust in him, and he shall bring he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring what you need, what you have, what you have hoped for to pass. But there's, like I said, there's steps to get what we want from the Most High. Just like we go on our job, we work a, a, a work week in order for us to get a paycheck. So there's something that the Most High requires out of you in order for him to move on your behalf. And that's obedience. And his obedience, according to the scriptures, matter of fact, I'm going to get that real quick. Stay where you at. I'm going to go to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, starting at, at, at verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So a lot of us don't know our purpose. A lot of us are wondering, what does the Most High require of us? How are we going uh, to let him move on our behalf? So this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Mm -hmm. 
So in order for us to let allow the Most High to move on our behalf, we have to fear him. And we fear him by keeping his commandments. All right? So from there, uh, give me the book of Matthew. And what are, we, what are we talking about? Why worry? If we have faith in the Most High, the reason why we worry is because our faith is taught by the traditions of man. And it's not, we don't have fear of the Most High according to what he says in his word. It's not about what I think. It's not about what I say. It's about what this word says. It's not about what your pastor think or your friends think or what they say. It's about what the word says. Okay, give me the book of Matthew chapter 6 and at verse, start at verse uh, da, 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 24. Okay, this is the book of Matthew chapter 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. The reason why we have so much confusion when it comes down to doctrine is because we're listening to what man say or what man think, or what man think that we're supposed to be doing. And we have made our pastors, our made our elders, our God, and we start to serve them. Okay? Go ahead, bring it up. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. So you cannot serve God and you can't serve man. So if we want answers, if we want answers to our problems, we got to go to the scriptures and do what thus saith the Lord. The scriptures was here for our learning so we can get understanding. If your pastor is going off from what the scriptures say, who are you going to follow? Are we going to follow pastor? Are we going to follow what the scriptures say? We have to make a choice. And you're not going to come up out of your circumstances. You're not going to change what you're going through until you start doing what thus saith the Lord. Point blank, period. That's now, right. now we're going to get these. These are people that people that we listen to. We we get people that we so-called say they love us or we love them. But it's impossible for a man to properly know love if he don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Let me prove that to you in the scriptures. I'm going to go to the book of 1 John. Chapter 5, I'm going to start at verse 2. And it reads, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. He said, by this we know that we love the children of God. So if I'm not keeping the commandments, I cannot properly love my brother. I'm going to laugh at their folly. I'm going to encourage them to do things that's contrary to the scriptures. But we sit in church day in and day out, and we don't and we don't change at all. We come to church filthy, and we leave filthy. Verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Meaning these commandments are not hard to do. All we have to do is, is love God enough to put down our folly, love God enough to put down our circumstances, love God enough to put down on people that mean us no good. All right? So, from there, give me, read verse 25. 25. Bring it, bring the whole chapter verse. Give me chapter and verse. No. Matthew man. chapter, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Okay. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. So what he's saying is, don't worry about what you what you're going to eat because if you're if you're following the law, statutes, and commandments, the Most High will always make sure that you have food on your table. If you follow the words of the Most High, He will always have make sure that you have clothes on your back. So this is something He's going to always make sure that the lights is on in your house. 
or that you have a roof over your head. So in other words, we cannot be stressed out about things that the Most High promised if you just be obedient to him. And this is fact. But the pastor tell you, give me your 10%. And, and, and the Most High is going to make a way where the scriptures say that if you follow him, he will make sure that you have that. And he will make sure that the necessities of life will be added unto you without you having to worry about it, without you having to stress about it, without you having to tear your body down on a, on a, on a dead end job to, uh, uh, um, for you to sustain your life and sustain your family. So you make the choice, rather you're going to serve the most high or you're going to serve men. Okay. From there, give me the book of first Peter. We're going to go to the book of first Peter, um, chapter five and at verse six. This is the book, 1 Peter, chapter 5 and 6. Bring it out. Humble yourself. Do what? Humble their, herself. No stress. Humble yourself. He says, humble yourself. Go. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that ye may exalt you in due time. So he says, humble yourself, there. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due time. Okay? What does this have to do with us wearing it and stressing? Go to verse 7. Casting all your care upon him. Casting some of your care. Casting all, all your care upon him. Okay. For he cares for you. He says, humble yourself. Therefore, unto the, under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due season, casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. We have to cast our cares to the Most High. That's the only way that we're going to be living a stress-free life. And we wonder why we sit up, a lot of our people are sitting up in hospitals bugged out of their mind because we're stressing about certain circumstances and certain things that the Most High should be handling for us through our obedience. The reason why he's not handling is because we refuse to obey the laws, statute of commands of the Most High. All right? So from there, go to the book of Proverbs. We're going to go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, and we're going to start at verse, start at verse 2. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and what? verse 2. Verse 2. Bring it up. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. So he's saying all the ways of a man is clean into his own eyes. The reason why we refuse to, because some people are still prosperous when it comes down to the things of this world and financial gain. So they, 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 they will try to charge you to say, see, I'm cool and I'm wicked as hell. Or I, I, I'm good with this and I'm wicked as hell. But the scriptures say, All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. Bring out verse 3. Verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Commit thy works to whom? The Lord. Okay. And thy thoughts shall be established. Established. So he said, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Meaning that we're not going to be worrying about certain things. We're not going to be worrying about certain circumstances. We have to submit ourselves and commit our works to the most high. Okay, go ahead at verse, uh, um, go ahead, verse 4. Verse 4, the Lord has made all things for himself, yea, even the
the wicked for the day of evil. So we think that the devil has made it, the, the, the devil, this, 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 this man in a red suit and, and horns has made evil. But we're sadly mistaken. The Most High said he made, the Lord has made all things for himself, yea, even the, even the wicked, for the day of evil. So there's wicked people and wicked circumstances. There's wicked spirits that is made just for the most high to, 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 um, to um, suffer judgment in the day. Okay. Go ahead. Verse six. Okay. Um, verse five. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination. So he's saying if you're proud in heart, you are an abomination in the most high. You know that circumstances is wrong. Brothers and sisters, there's millions, there's hundreds and maybe thousands of videos on YouTube, on Facebook of brothers bringing out the scriptures week in and week out, talking about turning from your evil and wicked ways. And you're proud. And where circumstances come to come into your place, you're sitting there balled up, stressed the hell out because you refuse to follow the, the, the law, statute, and commandments of the Most High. Bring it out. To the Lord, no hand join, and hand he shall not be in punished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, man depart from evil. So he said, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Mercy and truth. Let's get with truth. Let, 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 the, the, the truth is these scriptures. The truth is the commandments of the Most High. That's the only way we're going to be purged from iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart evil. The reason why these brothers and sisters is wicked as hell, because we're evil. Because we don't have the Most High, okay? From there, give me the book of Proverbs. Go back to the book of Salaki. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to go to the book of Sirach. I'm not, I bring it up. The book of Sirach, chapter 30. And at verse 21. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 21. It says, Give not over thy mind to heaviness, meaning do not stress, and afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. So not only are you stressing, but you're sitting down, you're balled up in the corner, and you're wearing, and you're wearing by yourself. You need to surround yourself with brothers. You need to surround yourself with sisters that fear the most high. And I'm not talking about church people who just only reads their scriptures on Sunday morning. But we're talking about people that truly fears the most high. And if you're not keeping the commandments, the all stats of commandments, you truly do not fear the most high. That's right. Okay. So now we're going to jump down to verse 23. It says, love thy own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. Dumb, dumb, dumb wicked family members, dumb brothers and sisters, that's, every time they come around you, they always stressed out. Something is always gone in their life. You didn't told them that they need to follow the law, statutes, commandments, and they refuse to. But every time they come around you, they have a spirit upon them. And it's always wicked trying to bring you down. The scripture says, love thy own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. For sorrow has killed many and there is no profit therein. So stop killing yourself with other people's circumstances. Stop killing yourself with other people's problems. If you then told them, how to come up out of their wicked ways and they don't want to listen. So again, this is Brother Uriel Ben Judah and Brother Dawi Ben Judah. We coming at you from Rise of the Chosen Truth Beyond the Surface Temple. We have videos, we don't we have um, you can follow us on YouTube at Mika Mikael One. You can follow us on, on this page right here. A lot of brothers that's going to be bringing up this truth. Again, we say Shabbat Shalom. No.